so water which you are using for industrial purpose so be free from hardness so be free from dissolved gases then only the so various problems which you are facing can be avoided for that water has to be softened that is called the conditioning of water so the water softening can be carried out by external conditioning that is the water which we are using for boiler is conditioned is softened before it is fed into the boiler that is external conditioning the other one is internal conditioning that we will see later so external conditioning the removal of hardness producing salts from water before they are fed into boiler that is called external conditioning this external conditioning is done either by demineralization or various other technique the demineralization is having three two other names ion exchange method or deionization all means same so external conditioning here we are carrying out using ion exchange method so here we are using an important substance called ion exchange resin what is that ion exchange resin it is a long chain cross link polymer it should be cross link only when the polymer it is a cross link insoluble organic polymer that organic polymer which is insoluble in water insoluble in acid and base since they are having cross links they have some micro pores it is micro porous in nature through that water can easily penetrate and such resins are attached with some groups that may be acidic or basic and the functional groups attached are responsible for exchanging the ions so when you are passing hard water through this ion exchange resins the hardness causing ions are exchanged by the resins making use of the cations and anions present in the resin so when we take ion exchange resin the resin may be cationic exchange and the other one is anionic exchange called as cationic exchanger it is represented as rnh2 for the sake of convenience and the anionic exchanger roh and this cationic exchangers are having acidic functional groups so the cross linked long chain polymers are attached with acidic functional groups that may be carboxylic group or sulfonic acid groups so these groups acidic groups making use of their h plus ion carried by them they are exchanging the cations of hot water so acidic functional groups exchanging their h plus ions with the cations of hot water examples of such cationic resins are sulfonated polystyrene which is having sulfonic group or styrene divinyl benzene copolymer which is having SO3H sulfonic acid group or carboxyl group anyone they will have whereas when we move to anion exchanger they have basic functional groups like NH2 or OH exchanging the anions of the hard water using their anion of anionic exchanger so basic functional groups amino oh exchanging the anion with the anion of hard water the examples are styrene divinyl benzene 
अमीन फॉर्मोल्डिहेट को पॉलीमर विद कोटनरी अमोनिया ग्रुप्स so these are the two reasons we have so when we take an ion exchange setup you will have both cationic and anionic exchange exchanges arranged in this order arranged in this order the first one is cation exchange resin followed by anion exchange resin so the water is passed through cationic change resin first and the water which is coming out of the cationic exchange resin that is which is free from cations or passed through anionic change resin there the anions are exchanged by the anion of anionic exchange resin and we are getting deionized water demineralized water anyway we can call so this is an ion exchange resin setup there are two chambers in the first chamber we have cation exchange resin and the second we have anion exchange resin and it is fitted with a thing called regenerated for regenerating cationic resin we have acid and for regeneration of anionic resin we have sodium hydroxide i'll go to this regeneration elaborately later here you may ask one question why we have the cation resin first followed by anion why not in the reverse here water is passed through hard water passed through cationic resin there the cations are exchanged by the resin and the resultant water is passed through anion exchange resin there anion anions are exchanged by the anion of anion exchange resin finally we are getting deionized water so why we should not have anion resin first then cation resin the reason is reason we can explain with the help of our exchange reactions so this is the exchange reaction by cationic resin and this is the exchange reaction by anionic resin so when you are passing water through the setup water is passed through a cationic exchange resin and the water which is free from cation is passed through anionic exchange resin their anions are exchanged we are getting pure water so here i have a question why the water should not be passed anion first followed by cation if we pass so the alkali produced in the anion exchange column will spoil the cation exchange resin that's why always we are arranging cation exchange resin first followed by anion exchange resin now let us concentrate on the exchange reactions taking place when we take our cation exchange resin the water which is passed through cation exchange resin the cations of hard water calcium magnesium sodium potassium ions are exchanged by exchanged by the cation of our resin so r nh2 is our resin ca2 plus ion present in hard water is exchanged by the cation of the resin and we are getting rca so water goes without any ca2 plus ion that is water is free from ca2 plus ion similarly magnesium ion so the calcium and magnesium ions are main hardness causing constituents so mg2 plus ion is replaced by this cation of cation exchange resin water is free from magnesium ion as well and sodium ion see normally when we take hard water we won't bother much about na plus and k plus because they are not hardness causing constituents 
So here sodium and potassium ions are also removed. So there we have a, we had a thing called lime soda process. So lime soda process is to remove hardness. So they will remove only Ca2 plus and Mg2 plus ions. So the water after lime soda process will contain sodium ions and potassium ions. So it is not completely free from ions. But here the water which you are getting by external conditioning that is ion exchange resin, it is free from all the cations. That is why this can be called as deionized water. The water which you are getting through lime soda process can be, cannot be called as deionized water. So that is a soft water we can say but not deionized water. So we can generalize all the deionized waters are soft waters but the reverse is not true. So here when you are pausing hard water through cation exchange resin, the water which we are getting here is completely from cations like Ca2 plus Mg2 plus Na plus and K plus. Now the resultant water that is water after the removal of cation moving to anion exchange resin. Here are the anions sulfate, chloride, even bicarbonates are removed by anion exchange resin. See here this HCl removing that is Cl minus ion, sulfate ion are removed by our anion exchange resin. So anions are removing chloride and sulfate ions from water and water is free from cations as well as anions we are getting pure water. So we got pure water. How long we can use this resin? We are pausing hard water, cations are exchanged in cationic resin, anions are exchanged in anionic exchange resin. So the cations and the anions are trapped by the resin. So what is the fate of the resin? How long the resin can be used? Can we use it forever? Can we use it continuously for years together? No, we cannot. Because that cation exchange resin is loaded with the cations exchanged. And the anion exchange resin is loaded with the anions exchanged. So these loaded, trapped or adsorbed ions has to be replaced. Then only the resin can function effectively that is called the regeneration of the resin. So this is our cationic resin which is having some loaded cation Ca2 plus Mg2 plus Na plus K plus, they can be removed by adding a dilute acid like hydrochloric acid. When you are pausing dilute hydrochloric acid, see this resin. See, RnH2 is our resin. When it is used, it becomes RCA. That is the resin is loaded with Ca2 plus ion and of course Na plus Mg2 plus. So this has to be regenerated for that we are pausing dilute hydrochloric acid. When you are pausing see here the resin is regenerated. Similarly RNA if any is converted into RNH. In the same manner, RNG can also be converted into RNH2 by pausing hydrochloric acid. So the resin is regenerated, it can be used further. In the same manner, our anion exchange resin, this is our anion exchange resin before use, it is used now, R-Cl2. So the Cl2 that is loaded anion has to be replaced and resin should be ready for use. For that we are pausing sodium hydroxide. It is to regenerate our anionic resin 
also on forcing sodium hydroxide through this anionic change resin. You have to be careful, don't pass hydrochloric acid through this, to, through this, not like that. It has to be separated, it should not be connected when you are regenerating it. So pass hydrochloric acid, remove it and here disconnect this for sodium hydroxide so the anion exchange resin will be regenerated so the resin is ready to use for that. So like that this is a reversible process. The resin a once it, it is not permanently used up, it is not destroyed on continuous use, it can be regenerated that is the main advantage of this technique. That is why this resin can be used continuously forever and we can get pure deionized water. So there are some advantages of this method. We are getting pure deionized water. In spite of that there are some defects because good lot of chemicals are involved. So the chemicals are costly. So it is, of, of course it is having some advantages. There are some disadvantages in terms of cost of the chemicals. But anyhow this process is effective one still in laboratory and in even industry we are using this external conditioning technique to get deionized water.